Digitizing is the process of interpreting an image into stitches. In Hatch, we do that by creating objects that have stitch properties. In this lesson, we'll digitize a simple design that uses the most frequently used digitizing tools. Many larger designs will use these same tools and techniques with just more repetitions. So let's start by inserting some artwork. I'll click on the Insert Artwork tool, and I'll go back to Artwork, Baking, and I want this egg beater. And I do want the bitmap version, the PNG version, and I'll just double click it. And there it is. Now I have my image dimmed, and if you want to dim your image, you can go to the Artwork Toolbox and click Dim Artwork here. So before I ever start digitizing, I need to think about, is this the size I want it? And it's a pretty good size. And let's say that I want it to fit in my 150 by 150 hoop. So I'm going to scale this down to 148 millimeters. Now that's a little more than a 10% decrease, and it should just be fine. I'm also going to look at the details in here, because if I shrink it too much, or if I have an inappropriate piece of artwork, I can have details that are too small to digitize. We're okay here, depending on what stitch types we choose. So the next thing I'll do is I'll sit here and I'll look at the image. And what I try to do is imagine in my head how I want it to look when it's done. And once I had that kind of idea in my head, and I do make changes as I go along as I see things, mm, doesn't look quite the way I had in mind, so I'll, I'll do something else. But this is pretty simple, so we should be good. I also need to think about what order am I going to digitize these in. A common rule of thumb is that when digitizing a design, we work from the background to the foreground, from the center out, and largest to smallest. Now, sometimes those three rules, they aren't really rules, they're guidelines, compete with each other. So we can do it all the time, but they're good guidelines to start with. So as I look at this design, I see that the wire portion of these beaters is kind of behind the, the shaft here. And this is behind the beater. And this looks like it's the same color. So I'm going to do that first. And then I'll do the mixer part. And then I'll do the star. And then I'll do these two little button things. And I'm just going to use all basic stitches on this. Once I get my basic stitches in, I can decide, do I want to put a pattern fill in here? Do I want to use a motif? Sometimes it's just a matter of getting the shapes first. So now that we've made that decision, and I know that I'm going to start with my beater, so I'm going to zoom in on that, and we can take a close look at them. We can see that each little wire is defined by two sides. And if I press M on the keyboard, get my measure tool, that is really skinny. And ideally we want to have, at bare minimum, one millimeter wide preferably 1.4 millimeters wide or so for a satin stitch. So I'm not going to worry about doing two sides of this. I'm just going to do a run stitch right down the center. So I have decided that I want a run stitch, and now I think about, okay, is this an open shape or a closed shape? I'm going to say it is an open shape, and I'm just going to go to the Digitize Toolbox and click the Digitize Open Shape tool. We don't have any choices here because it's just an outline. And I'm going to keep it at single run for now. And I'm just going to use the default color. The default color is the first color when you open up in a new blank design. And that will be this color swatch over here. And sometimes I work in different colors just because it's easier to see. And I'm going to start with this one. And I'm going to start up under the shaft. And I'm just going to do left and right mouse clicks. Doing right mouse clicks for curves, left mouse clicks for straight, and then I'll come back down this way. And you want to use a minimum number of nodes that you can get by with. And don't worry about being perfect, and don't try to be as fast as possible. I think of digitizing as relaxing and enjoyable, and I am not a speed demon when I digitize. And now that's the last node. I'll just press Enter, and there we go. Now, if I'm not happy with any of that, I see some places I really like to fix, I can click Reshape, and I can just adjust some nodes. Now, you don't have to be perfect on here, because 
no one is going to see your artwork. Your artwork doesn't go with the embroidery design. So if it looks good, then you can keep going. So I'll press escape. And now I'm going to use the digitize blocks tool. I'm going to make sure that I have a fill. I'm going to change it to a satin and I'll keep the same color. And I'll put a pair of points here and a pair of points up here. Press enter. Now I'm going to press the space bar and that should take me back to a run. And what I want to do is travel from here down to here. So I can just kind of sneak under those other objects that are going to appear. And I'm going to stop there because I may want to change my whisk to maybe a triple run or possibly even a back stitch, but I still want this to be just a run. Now, because we have already digitized this other one, we could redigitize it again, or we could just copy and paste. So I'm going to select these two. I'm going to hold down the right mouse button, and I'm just going to drag that over here like this. And then we have that. I'm going to zoom out a bit by pressing the minus key. And the next piece I want to digitize is up here. And I could just go straight across like that. I don't usually do that because if the top fill should end up going in the same direction, it could end up bleeding through. And same with this one. If this one ends up being in the same direction as my top fill, it could bleed through. So I might do something like this. I'll click reshape, add a little node there, and just zigzag it up like that. So now I need to get from this one up to here. So I'll just start here and I'll just do something. And if I do something really bad and I click out here and I don't like that, I can press the backspace key and just put it where I need it to be. Click the digitize blocks tool again and we'll make this guy. And rather than make it the bottom part at an angle like that, I'm going to make it straight. And that's because where I place my, my points is the angle of the stitches. And I want to keep that straight. And let's save it. I'll give it a name. I'll just call it Egg Beater. So the next step is the mixer body. And the mixer body has this opening here for the handle. We'll digitize the body as one closed shape with a tatami fill and then we'll digitize the hole using the digitize holes tool. So this is a two-step process. I'll click digitize close shape. I'll make sure it's a fill, a tatami, and we'll choose a different color. And I like to start in a straight part. So I'm going to start there, left, left, and then we'll do a couple of rights to get around this curve. And then another left. See if we can get by with one right click there. That looks pretty good. And now I'm just going to press enter and that will close my shape. Now we can't see where that hole is. So I'm going to turn off tree view. And now I can see that. Another trick here would be to turn off the stitches. You can do that by pressing S on the keyboard. Now I want to digitize holes. So I'm going to digitize right here, just like I was doing before. And I'm just doing kind of one right click there in the corner. And I'll press enter. Now down here on the status bar, it says enter point one of the hole two. I don't have another hole. So I'll just press enter. I'll turn stitches back on by pressing S and I'll turn tree view back on if I want to do that and see what I've got. So I'm going to turn off stitches again because we have these other pieces. Now I have a star here and I could probably find one in my standard shapes tools, but gosh, this is going to be so easy to digitize. I'm just going to do closed shape. I think I want a different color. Looks like it's maybe black and everything else is okay. It's still a fill. It's still a tatami. And these are all just left mouse clicks. And when I get to here, I press enter. 
and it's closed. Now for the circles, we could use the circle tool. Let's pick a different color. Oh, that red looks pretty good. And I want to satin for this. So I'm going to click in the center and just drag out, press enter, and press enter again. And we can check it. Turn on tree view. There it is. Turn off tree view, press S. And this one I could do the same way. I could also copy and paste this, or I can also digitize a circle with the digitize close shape tool. And I'm going to zoom in to make it maybe easier for you to see this. And I'm just going to right click, right click, right click, right click, enter. Maybe we can line that one up a little bit better. I think this one came in as a Tommy, so we'll change that to a satin. Press zero to zoom all. I'll turn on my stitches by pressing S. Turn on tree view. We need to change the color of this. How about this green? And there it is. Now, we do have a problem here because we have a full density star on top of a full density body here. So let's remove overlaps. The way we remove overlaps is we select the one we're going to remove the overlap with. And then we'll go to the Edit Objects Toolbox and click Remove Overlaps. And I'm going to right click on Remove Overlaps because I use this tool frequently and I often have this set to zero. And I want to make sure I have some overlap here. And the default overlap is one millimeter. And that's pretty good. Let's just leave it at that. And if I turn off tree view, I'll zoom in, and you can see how it's overlapped. I'll zoom back out. Now, what about these two? These are satin stitches, and they're pretty small. We do not need to remove overlaps under this. The purpose of remove overlaps is to reduce bulk and minimize stitch count, and it served its purpose here. But if we removed them under here, we would just have a teeny tiny little opening there, and we could potentially run up our stitch count a bit because it would have to work around that hole. And the way to think of this is, is imagine that you have a wall. Let's say this is a wall, and you have to walk around it. You can't just walk through it. So you have to walk around it, and these are your stitches. They have to keep working around this thing rather than going across. It's not necessary to remove overlaps on every single object. If there's small satin stitches like this, then you probably don't need to. So currently our star stitch angle and our body stitch angle are going at the same direction. So I'm going to select the body. I'm going to go to the stitching tab. Well, I could do this with either reshape or the stitching tab. And because I don't want a perfectly straight or vertical or horizontal one, I'm just going to move it this way because I have no idea what angle that is. And I'm just going to visually line it up. Now, can you see this line going through here? That's because I have closest join turned on. And the object came in up here because that was the closest point to this last object. And it's leaving there because that's the closest to there. When we can have stitches flow continuously from one side to the other, you are less likely to get these pattern stripes in there. Now, usually you don't see them when you sew. You might see a gap if you don't hoop and stabilize properly, but I'm just going to move that down there. And that looks better. So I'll press Escape. And then on the star, we can try a pattern. So let's look at some of the embossed patterns. So you can experiment with the different patterns and see which one you like. So the next thing I like to do is I like to watch it run in the stitch player. So I'll click the stitch player and I'm going to speed it up. And I'm just kind of watching it to see, does it have the underlay I want? Does it look like it's pathed efficiently? Did I leave anything out?
And you can see that it's not filling in one even pass all the way down. And that's because we have this big hole here. It's kind of like a wall. We have to walk around. And there's our design. I'll exit that. This is a pretty basic design, yet we learned how to use a few different tools, how to make a design efficient, how to change stitch angles, colors, and patterns. And these are the things that you're going to do in a bigger and more complex design. You'll just do it more times. Now, I want to remind you, a digital file is not really an embroidery design until you stitch it out. Please do stitch out your practice pieces to see how they sew. This will help you learn more about your technique and what adjustments you need to make as you digitize. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to do an applique. And we'll take the same design and we'll turn the body of the mixer into an applique and the star into an applique.